All right, let's talk mind-altering substances, drugs and alcohol. I'm only going to talk about three things, alcohol, uh, marijuana, and uh, psychedelics, specifically fungi, mushrooms. So drugs have a vibration. Each drug has a different vibration. From what I understand, alcohol is the lowest vibration or one of the lowest. It is the lowest of the three I'm going to talk about. Alcohol is down here. Marijuana is up here. Plant medicines are higher in vibration. Psychedelics are higher up. And not all psychedelics, to be very clear about that. Um, plant medicine, psychedelics, fungi specifically. I might mention ayahuasca in here too. I, I want to make sure people understand ayahuasca. Alcohol is designed to keep us low vibrational. There's a reason it's legal in the US and all the other drugs aren't, is because it's designed to keep us lower vibrational, to incite um, lower vibrational emotions, to make us angry, to make us depressed, to keep us in a state of lethargy so that we're just drinking and ignoring the rest of the, what's around us, what's actually going on, so that we're fighting against our philosophical team mentalities and ignoring the rest of the world. It's designed to do that. Uh, you know, it's part of the mythology behind alcohol. The whole reason it came to be is to control the populations of Egypt, if that is the true story, to keep them from rioting and from being unhappy. They gave them alcohol to distract them. If you go on this journey, you can consume alcohol and still channel, still connect with other beings, but you won't be able to access higher, higher chakras, other chakras higher than your, your main ones. And you may not be able to clear all the traumas and those sorts of things. I'm hearing absolutely not. You will not be able to clear all of your chakras and traumas if you are drinking alcohol. You're essentially just drinking alcohol and creating more problems for yourself. You're also doing detrimental things to your physical health because it is a poison. It is a literal poison to your body. But you could still potentially do that if you want the human journey. I don't agree with it anymore. If you're going to drink alcohol, it is going to lower your vibration. If you're up here and alcohol is down here, it's going to drop you right to that vibration. It's going to open you to lower vibrational reactions to entities who are interested in lower vibrational attack, like um, affecting you in lower vibrational ways, attaching to you parasites, energetic parasites, lower vibrational entities who want to mess with you and that sort of thing. Alcohol is a can of worms, essentially, if you continue drinking it. It is a problem. Uh, if you're drinking it now, don't be afraid. Don't like fear it or anything. Just understand that as you take this journey and you raise your vibration, your vibration is going to rise above alcohol to where it really starts affecting your body, making you sick, um, doing things uh, to your in your ability to intake it, making you feel sick for days. I, I know somebody that was going through this process, raising their vibration, drank alcohol, and they were down for like three days. They, they in a brain fog and lower vibrational, like it's very, very Im important in your diet not to take in toxins, not to drink something that's literally a toxin, even though it's socially acceptable. And to stay strong in moments of socialization where people are pressuring you to drink. You don't have to drink because of them. It's up to you to protect yourself, to do your, your journey, and to tell people yes or no. If you choose to drink alcohol, it is going to affect your vibration. It is going to affect everything. Even if you just take one shot. If you're like, I'm just going to have one. You better be prepared for that to drop you when you're reaching higher levels, it will drop you. Now, when it comes to marijuana, marijuana is, well, let me say this with alcohol too. Alcohol was designed to keep us low vibrational, to control us, to distract us, to keep us focused on other things. So keep that in mind too, when you think of that. 
when you look at alcohol and you go, why is alcohol legal and nothing else is? And only recently did marijuana start becoming legally accepted. Why was alcohol the lowest vibrational of all the drugs? Because it's low vibrational. Marijuana is a little bit higher than that. Most people will say, I don't have a marijuana problem if they're smoking. Marijuana is only okay if you respect the plant. Plant medicine is only okay if you respect the plant. Most people are relying on it. They're relying on it to clear their anxiety, their depression, to get through the day, to relax, to sleep, to do all these things. If you're relying on it, you're not respecting the plant. Simple as that. It's meant to be a tool. It's meant to be a tool to help you heal. If you need to heal, it's there to help you heal. If you have anxiety, it's there to help you get through your anxiety so that you can sit down and do the inner work to heal your anxiety, to heal your worries, your fears. It's not meant to be relied on. If you're having trouble sleeping and you're smoking because you're having trouble sleeping, you're not curing the reason you're having trouble sleeping. Sleeping. A lot of people will talk about the pharmaceutical industry and how the pharmaceutical industry treats symptoms, and then they go to marijuana. If you're using marijuana to rely on it for anxiety, for worry, depression, fear, relaxation, sleep, etc., it's the same thing as the pharmaceutical industry. You're treating the symptoms. You're not respecting the plant. It is there as a healing medicine, a medicine. But if you're overusing it, you're not letting it, you're, or you're not doing the work to heal yourself. And it has a vibration, just like alcohol is down here. As you raise your vibration and you do all these steps and you're like, okay, I'm gonna raise my vibration more. As soon as you smoke, boom. As soon as you take that gummy, boom. You're dropping your vibration and you will feel the effects. You'll start taking it and you'll be like, wow, I can't connect as much anymore. I'm not experiencing as much anymore. And you'll start having physical effects, physical symptoms, just like alcohol. You'll start getting sick more. You'll start getting lazy. Most people get lazy and just don't do anything. And you'll start needing it. It's the key. You'll start going to bed and being like, I need it. You'll get anxious and be like, I need it. Be very careful with that. Just because it's not necessarily considered one of the addictive drugs out there doesn't mean you can't be addicted to it. Doesn't mean you can't have a need and a reliance on it. And to understand it has a vibration, you can rise past the vibration. And if you take it, even if you're way up here, it's going to drop you. And that is terrible to feel. And you will feel it. Fungi, psychedelics. I'm going to say one thing I say about psychedelics. If it is man-made, do not take it. Do not trust it. If it is man-made, you should not be putting it in your body when it comes to drugs. Period. Man-made drugs are made from very, very dangerous things for your body and your vibration. But when it comes to psychedelics, when it comes to fungi, I don't take them. I've had the chance to take them. I was told not to by my guides. I didn't understand why at the time they told me not, don't take it, it will affect you. And uh, the words they, they used were something like, it will um, hinder your ability to do things and backfire, and there will be a backfire effect on all the work you've done and progress you've made. At the time, I didn't realize alcohol, because I didn't know about vibration. This is something I learned recently working with other people that I've become friends with. Alcohol is down here, marijuana, fungi, and I was up here when I had the, the ability, the, the opportunity to take them. So I have never taken them because my guides guided me against it because it was like, if you take them, you're going to drop and you're going to backfire. And this whole, all this work we've done for, for years is going to be affected because of how high you are right now. 
And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So I didn't take them. And I really wanted to. I wanted to experience them. I had a safe place to do it, a friend to do it with. And I didn't end up doing it because I was like, look, my guys are saying, no, I need to trust them. I don't want to lose progress. But fungi are up here. If you're down here and you take psychedelics, you take fungi, mushrooms, they can open you to consciousness. They can open you to the truth. You can experience plant spirits, fairies, angels, ETs, interdimensionals. It opens you wide to experience the truth of consciousness. It's part of the reason mushrooms are here. They're here to help us, not just with consciousness. They want to help in other ways, which is another topic altogether when it comes to integrating them with technology, buildings, and all these other things. But from a base level, they're here to help us experience and know that consciousness exists, especially in a time where high vibrational consciousness was hard to achieve, so we had to rely on fungi as ancients because the Earth's vibration was low. In that case, fungi are up here, the earth and people's vibration is low. So yes, taking fungi, taking psychedelics, mushrooms, puts us into that vibration of consciousness where we can experience more. If you're raising your vibration, be aware. If you take mushrooms, psychedelics, and the vibrations here, and you're up here, you're going to drop. It's going to backfire. It can be detrimental to your journey. It can drop you. So if you're not above them yet, you have to be, or if you're not above them yet, sorry, you can take them. And I don't, I, this is not medical advice. I always work with your medical practitioners, all that. I'm not a doctor. Obviously, this is, anything you do is at your own risk. But if you're going to experiment and you want to, Make sure your vibration is lower because as soon as you're higher and you drop, it brings you back down. It cancels out the work you've done and it makes it harder for you to go on your journey because you have to rework your vibration back up. It's up to you to maintain your vibration. They're here to help until you do the work. And again, there's a lot of work being done in, with fungi and anxiety, depression, all of this. They're not a crutch. You still have to do the work. If you're relying on them to get through your day, to get through different aspects, you're not doing the work. When you do the work and use the tool to help you do the work to heal, you get to a point where you no longer need the tool. Fungi are the same way. It doesn't mean the medical applications aren't necessary, aren't applicable they are and then I've had people ask well if you've never taken fungi if you've never had mushrooms if you've never really smoked why why wouldn't you want to because I want my vibration to be high I protect my vibration I am in charge of my vibration you are in charge of your vibration I grew to a point where I was beyond fungi and my my guides came to me and said absolutely not you can do it if you want to. Those were their words. You can do it if you want to. But if you do, there will be consequences. Because I was already up here. I protect my vibration. So I won't touch them. I won't experience them unless I'm guided to at some point for some reason. I've done a lot of research on mushrooms, on psychedelics, reading, hearing experiences, watching experiences. That's my life. <laughs> If, if, if you want to experience that, raise your vibration, do the work, that will be your life. You won't need the tool. That is why I don't take these. Because I don't want to drop my vibration and I'm not willing to sacrifice the work that I've done to get to this level. And you should be aware of that too. If you're raising your vibration and you rise past marijuana and psychedelics and then some friends come out and they go, hey, let's go drink all weekend. You better be prepared to go from here to drop right back down and to have not, not only to drop down, to get sick. When you do that, you will get sick. Guaranteed. You will have multiple days where you feel terrible and you will have a lot of work to regain that vibration because you went out and sacrificed your vibration to put toxins in lower vibrational things in your body. 
Now, when we do get higher vibrational, when we do come to these higher states of being, when we do eat plant-based and we have a clean vessel, a pure vessel, it is easier for us to detox and to move out of it faster. But do you want to sacrifice that for several days of sickness, for a week, for a month, whatever it is, depending on where you're at? I don't. I don't want to have that work. I don't want to open myself up to other beings because I lowered my vibration. They finally see that they can affect me. I don't want to do that. So that's why I talk about these things, about vibration, about where you're at. Can you experience it in a healthy way? If you can, that's fine. That's up to you. But when it comes to vibration, you will rise past a part where you can simply meditate. Somebody recently said, well, yeah, but mushrooms put you in contact with the plant spirit. If that's the reason you're using them, you're missing out on the point. When you come to a certain level, you don't need the mushrooms anymore. Because you can simply sit down in your chair or go out into the woods and put your hand on a tree and you can talk to the plant spirit. You don't need that stuff. You can go out, you can talk to the tree, you can talk to the mushrooms. You don't even have to touch them. You can look at them and you can telepathically communicate with them. It's as easy as that. Once you reach that level, you don't need those tools. Those tools are like, I like to use math as an example. When you're a kid and you're in first or second grade, you have the marbles, you have the hippos, you have these different things to help you count. You go into a later grade, you get a calculator. You don't have the marbles and the hippos and the little things that help you count. You have a calculator. And then you learn your times tables and you learn all this, this other stuff and you memorize everything. And then you don't need the calculator. Now, that example might be a little flawed in the sense that for advanced math problems you do, but the basic math is what I'm talking about. Basic math, you don't need the calculator. That's the whole idea. You graduate above and beyond the use of those. And even in the example of the calculator, even if you do advanced math, you can do advanced math without a calculator. You can learn it all and write it out and do it on your own. You don't need the calculator at all because you've learned and you've excelled and you've discovered how to do all of it without the tools. And so you never have to rely on them or need them again. It's the same with plant medicine, with drugs and alcohol. Ayahuasca, a lot of people ask me about ayahuasca with my opinions. I've never taken it. These types of psychedelics deserve respect. What I will say is if you are one of the people who think an ayahuasca journey is in your path or a journey of a sacred plant medicine of that type, you have to respect the plant. You have to understand the journey and you better make sure you have a shaman who knows what they're doing. These substances, these medicines, these spirits are not meant to be mistreated. And that's coming straight from spirit. They are not meant to be mistreated. They are meant to be respected. They are here to help you on your journey to understand consciousness, to heal traumas, to clear you, to raise your vibration to the level of the plant. Once you rise past the plant, you no longer need it. Ayahuasca puts you in contact with other beings, puts you in contact with the plant spirit, with Mother Earth, with all these other, other dimensional spaces. Once you rise past its vibration, you don't need it anymore. But if you're going to do it, it is not the same as rolling a little bit of marijuana and smoking it. You need a shaman who knows what they're doing, not somebody who just is going to give you some ayahuasca and watch you in a room and make sure that you don't hurt yourself, but somebody who's going to walk you through it for multiple days. Somebody who's going to do the rituals with you. Somebody who knows the plant spirit intimately 
and understands how to work with it. Somebody who truly knows that plant spirit and is willing to work you through the process of breaking yourself open and rebuilding yourself because that's what it does. It completely shatters your reality and puts you back together. Respect the plant. Respect the journey. It is not a parlor trick. It is not a game. It is not something to do because it's fun. That is the mistake people make. Fungi, mushrooms, we do them because they're fun. Marijuana, it's fun. Ayahuasca, I want to do it because it's fun. It sounds fun. It sounds interesting. That's the wrong reason. You should have a reason to use it. You should have a motive of healing, connecting, learning, journeying, and understanding that you are going to have to face your demons in those journeys and heal yourself. Again, it's not a parlor trick. It's not a game. It's not something just for fun. It is a tool to help us understand consciousness exists, to connect us to plant spirits, to connect us to Mother Earth, to connect us to other forms of consciousness, and to understand that this is all real, that this is all real. All of these things that we're experiencing are real through the plant. It is an ancient tool. Ayahuasca is an ancient tool where people were lower vibrationally. Ayahuasca was up here. Shamans learned how to work with the plant and could bring people up to it to experience consciousness. We are in a state of shifting where our vibrations are rising above the plant medicines. Doesn't mean they're not useful. Doesn't mean they're not there. And doesn't mean some people can't go on those journeys. But remember, respect the plants. Respect the medicine. Respect the spirit. Respect the journey. If you do that, you'll be fine. But drugs and mind-altering substances of any kind, that's a decision that's in your hands. Are you willing, are you vibrationally lower than it? Will it open you and expand you and help you? Are you relying on it? Or are you higher than it? And will it drop you? And how much higher are you? If you're a little bit higher and it drops you, you might not feel anything. It might not affect you. But if you're like me and you're like way higher and it drops you, there can be blowback. There can be consequences. So it's something to really think about in your journey of whether or not you're going to do any type of drug or alcohol or mind-altering substance. And I leave that with you. Again, good luck on your spiritual journey. Choose wisely. Uh, always work with your guides. If your guides guide you towards something, then maybe it's for you. But always respect the tools you are using in your spiritual journey. They are sacred acts. They are sacred ways of being and connecting. And they are meant to help you not to be relied upon, not to be the crutch anymore as we raise vibration. Thank you again for watching. Uh, any questions, let me know below and we'll get to the next lesson.